joining us today. Uh, we are happy to be here. And we are about uh, to present uh, how do we use Flink in Zalando's world of microservices. The agenda for this presentation is um, basically we introduce the infrastructure, the new architecture that we are using at Zalando. Then we introduce our team, which is called uh, Saiki. Then uh, we describe how we have adapted and how we are using Flink in our new microservices world. And then we will introduce you to our two current use cases, which are business process monitoring and streaming ETL. And finally, we will, would like to share with you some, our, some of our future ideas that we have and the work that we will have in the next year using Flink as well. So, well, as they already present us, we are Mihail and Javier. We are from Salando, and we are from the business intelligence team. So, how many of you know uh, Salando? Can you please raise your hand? Great. How many of you have bought something at Salando? Cool. Thank you. So, this is our front end, basically, Salando. Who are we? Uh, we are one of Europe's largest online fashion retailers. We are in 15 countries. We have more than 19 million active users. Last year, we had a revenue of more or less 3 billion euros. We have 1,500 brands. We have more than 150,000 products. And we have more than 11,000 employees in Europe. Yeah, you will say, yeah, OK, you do fashion. You are a retailer. What do you have to do with technology? Well, we are online, so we are all over the internet. And we have a pretty big technology team. We are actually more than 1,300 engineers at Zalando. Uh, we are a rapidly growing international team. If you are interested in the company, in our tech culture, which is pretty cool, I invite you to go to tech.zalando.com. Then you can find our tech culture and a lot of available positions because we are hiring. So if you are interested, or please don't hesitate to ask us after the presentation. OK, so as I said, we are from the business intelligence team. And if you know more or less business intelligence, you will say, OK, business intelligence is more a batch process. So what do you, what do, you do with Flink, a stream engine? So uh, I would like to introduce first, before, before Flink, uh, what is our current and old as well architecture in business intelligence. As I said, the classic business intelligence process is more a batch process. So basically, you have a bunch of databases, your CRM, your CMS, whatever database, uh, your ERP in your company. And then you have an extraction, transformation, and load process, an ETL process. Yes. So you extract data from these uh, source databases. More or less, all of, these, all of these are relational databases. Then you transform this data uh, based on business rules and also based on requirements from the stakeholders. And then you load this data into a relational data warehouse. At Zalando, we have something similar. We have a cluster of Postgres databases. Then we use uh, Kettle by Pentaho as an ETL tool. Here we, we extract the data, we transform the data, and we deliver it to our Oracle data warehouse. Yes, in Oracle as well, we have some transformations. And then we provide it, we give the data to our, uh, to our stakeholders, which are basically data scientists who use Exasol, which, which is, an, is an analytical database, and to our other stakeholders that consume reports and charts in, in tools such as MicroStrategy. So this works. Um, most of the companies around the world who do, that, uh, that uh, do business intelligence have this kind of architecture. But last year, one year and a half ago, the company did a whole change in the tech culture in the company and in the architecture of the company. And last year, they, we introduced uh, radical agility. Radical agility is our new tech culture that is uh, supported by three pillars. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose, yes? Autonomy is basically the arch to direct our lives. Mastery is the desire to get better and better at things that matter. And purpose is to work towards something that is greater than ourselves, yes? Uh, of course, this is a sociological theory, I would say. And I would like to dig a bit 
into the autonomy inside Salando and, inside, and in technology. Yes? If you are interested in the whole idea, you can as well go to tech.salando.com and learn more about our uh, tech culture. So what does it mean to be autonomy in radical agility and in technology inside Salando? It means that each team can choose their own technology. So before, we were working only with Java. Now we have projects with Python, Java, Scala, any language you, you can use, you will use. That includes as well the persistence layer. Before, we were using only Postgres. Now we are using Postgres, Cassandra, Redis, Elasticsearch, whatever. Now each team is as, is as well uh, in charge of their own operations, and each team has their own AWS account, yes? Isolated AWS account, yep? So if, it's, if each team develops their own products, their own applications in an uh, individual Amazon account, it means that the, the applications or the services need to, to, to communicate somehow. This happens via a RESTful API, yes? So each team builds in front of their application a RESTful API. This RESTful API uh, hides uh, the database layer, right? And if you remember, I was saying that the classical, the classical business intelligence process connects to the database, to the data source, and extracts data from it. And now the data is behind the RESTful API. So it means that doing an ETL is quite difficult, a, a classical ETL process. Then we were thinking, OK, how can we uh, solve this? How can we extract the data? To extract the data, or actually not to extract the data, but to get the data from the different services, at Zalando, we created an event bus that we call Nakadi. Yes, this Nakadi event bus is based on Kafka, and for you to understand, it's basically a Kafka service, a Kafka service behind a RESTful API. Yes, so with this uh, event bus that we have at the company, every application, every team publish data in the bus, and every team can consume the data. And who are the Biggest consumers of the data, of the data, we, the business intelligence team. Then, now, the the challenge is different. Now we have we already have the data in one place, and we need to consume it, and we need to deliver it to our classical business ETL at our house. Then, in order to do that, we assemble our team. Our team is Saiki. So Saiki is the answer to move data from Amazon, from the event bus, to an Oracle at our house. Yes? So how does this uh, work? Basically, we extract data from the Kafka service to our own Kafka cluster. Yes? This enables us to use the, the native Kafka APIs and to process the data faster than if we just consume the data directly from the, from the service. Then, from our own Kafka cluster, we created an API to export the data to Oracle. Yes? The connection between Oracle and Amazon cannot be done via an LDBC connector or a JDBC connector. It has to happen via RESTful API. So this API, what, does, what, what this API does is it writes CSV files that are quite easy to consume by Oracle. It writes the, it, it writes the files to S3, and then Oracle downloads, downloads these files from S3 and loads them in the database. And, do all the, and Oracle does all the ETL process and, uh, and recalculated the, the KPIs and everything. So this is pretty straightforward, I would say. But we have a lot of opportunities here. So we move a bit uh, forward. And now we would like to pre-process the data, yes? For Oracle, it's quite complicated to process, I don't know, 10 million rows in one merge statement every five minutes. So what we do is that we process the data with Flink before delivering it to Oracle. So Flink, Flink reads the data from Kafka, writes it again in Kafka, and we use the same REST API to get the data, to download the data to Oracle. As well, in our team, we are building a data lake. The data, our data lake is the secure storage uh, for the long-term data in Salando. Yes? 
but that's a different talk. I'm not going to speak more about the data lake. And now we are not only able to deliver data to our uh, regular uh, uh, business intelligence co uh, customers. Now we, as, we can as well deliver data to different teams because now we have a REST API. So anyone can consume data from this REST API. For example, now we are delivering data to, directly to data scientists, to forecast teams, to any team inside the company that could uh, use the data. So to sum up before, uh, before digging up in the Flink topic, so for you to remember, before we were basing uh, our extraction in data loads because the data was in uh, relational databases, now we have a stream of events. That is basically our Kafka service. Before we were connecting, we were connecting to the databases using JDBC connections. Now we use uh, REST, RESTful services. Before we were only using or extracting data from Postgres. Now we can extract data from any uh, database available. And before we were deliver, we were extracting data from multiple sources and delivered it it to only one team. Now we can deliver the same data to multiple teams, right? So this is more or less the big picture of what we are doing in Salando and in business intelligence with microservices. Now I would like to invite Mikhail to speak more about Flink uh, in Salando's world of microservices. Thank you, Javier. So um, yeah, now I would like to come to the Flink part of this talk and um, describe more how um, Flink um, suits our microservices world. Let us start with the um, opportunities which we uh, see in this uh, new microservices world. Um, first of all, we have cloud computing, so we can do distributed ETL and uh, also uh, scale dynamically depending on our workloads. Then uh, we have access to real-time data as um, all teams publish data to the central event bus and uh, we, are, we are having direct access to it. Then uh, also we have access uh, implicitly to real-time data. For, uh, third, then um, the data lake, which provides a distributed access um, and finding great security for other teams. And before delivering data to the data lake, then we can uh, transform it aggregated and so on and so forth. And fourth, um, we have semi-structured data. And I would like to quote um, Fabian Huske from Data Artisans. General uh, purpose data processing engines like Flink or Spark let you define your own data types and functions. So using general purpose um, data processing engines, we are able to process this semi-structured data. OK. Then, um, yeah, these are uh, all kinds of opportunities that we see, and how can we best take advantage of them? Our answer is stream processing. And um, on, on our path, uh, on our journey, first we have uh, decided to evaluate some uh, stream processing frameworks. We started with um, Spark, Storm, uh, Flink, and Samza. Then um, we decided that we want also a batch processing capability, so we excluded um, Storm and Samsa because of it, and um, then we had uh, Spark and Flink uh, as, a, as a direct competitors. For them, we built uh, POCs for our use cases and uh, did a qualitative, quali qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, evaluation. Um, I'd like to show you briefly how the race unfolded. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Sorry. Uh, doesn't work. So. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, we have uh, some technical difficulties. So as you can see, the um, thing is very fast and starts. <laughs> so uh, then gets rid of Spark. Uh, almost at the finish line. Gets the finish line to himself. Also gets rid of a future competition. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yeah, but now on a more serious note, um, I would like to come to, to uh, directly comparing uh, Spark and Flink. We have evaluated um, the versions of Spark 1.5.2 and uh, Flink 0.10.1. Um, first of all, um, I would like to mention the processing uh, mode, processing support. Um, so Spark does micro-batching, as probably most of you know, and Flink differentiates itself there that it, uh, it processes tuple at a time. Um, an important feature is the temp temporal processing support. Um, again, um, Flink can, uh, is able to process um, to do event time processing and ingestion time, uh, also um, processing time. This is very, uh, the event time processing is very important um, for us to handle out of order events. And yeah, um, the latency, um, our um, benchmarks um, uh, were consistent also with the Yahoo benchmark. And there we saw um, latency of seconds for, for the Spark, um, uh, use cases for Spark POCs, and uh, for the Flink POCs, we saw sub-second latency. Uh, another feature is the back pressure handling. So if the throughput uh, has to increase uh, at a moment's notice, um, in uh, Spark, you have to manually configure it, while uh, in Flink, you have it, uh, it's handled implicitly by the system's architecture. In Spark 1.5.2, um, the state was implemented as a di distributed data set. So for each processed micro-batch, then um, a full, system, a full state scan was necessary. Uh, to be fair, um, Spark introduced in uh, version 1.6.0 the key value store, um, while Fling already had it in the 0.10.1. Uh, so there you could have a value lookup back here. Now coming to the um, more subjective um, features uh, of um, Flink and Spark, um, we saw in Flink that we had a better operator library, just to mention um, the split operator, window by count, for which there was no, uh, no operator in Spark back then. Also the support. Um, the mail list is really great, and I would like to use this opportunity uh, to thank you guys, because I know most of you are there present and uh, use some of your free time to dedicate it to the mailing list. Thank you. And also we, have, uh, we are in direct contact with uh, data artisans. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, we uh, decided to go with Apache Flink, because it's a true stream processing framework. It processes events at a consistently uh, high rate with low latency. It's scalable. And it has a great community and site support from Berlin, Germany. Uh, we are also based in Berlin, so our tech headquarters, headquarters, head, tech headquarters is in Berlin. And uh, last but not least, um, we expect a steady flow of university graduates with Flink skills, uh, because Flink, uh, as you all know, originates from uh, Berlin's academia. And yeah. So now, um, so if you want to uh, know more details about our evaluation, I invite you to go to our tech blog and read more about our use cases and how uh, did the evaluation really go. Yeah. Uh, of course, as Javier said, uh, we have everything on AWS, so we had to build a AWS appliance for Flink. We have our, uh, uh, we use EC, uh, EC2 instances, so we use uh, Flink's standalone mode. And uh, we have EC2 instances and we use uh, uh, also Docker. Um, yeah, so we have uh, our master and, um, load balancer and then we have a worker load balancer. As you can see, there's a dotted line for the, for the shadow master, as this is still a work in progress. Um, we want in the future to also implement a high availability mode of, for Flink. Yes, now coming to our use cases. Um, the first one is business process monitoring. Uh, I would like to first to give a definition of business of a business process. So first of all, a business process is a, in its simplest form, a chain of correlated events. So um, um, hopefully, so you have a start event and a completion event, and um, the start event 
for when an order is created, then you have an order created, and when all the passes have shipped. So if you have an order with multiple items, and then you expect that uh, all the passes have been shipped to this uh, to your location, to your address. And uh, as business events from, from the whole Zalando uh, platform uh, for, uh, flow through Psyche, we have, of course, the opportunity to, to process those streams in real time. Um, what, um, what's the business value for, for this uh, business process monitoring? So first of all, we can uh, check if uh, businesses, uh, business processes in uh, the whole Zalando platform work. So we have microservices and we have uh, business processes which span um, a lot of uh, microservices. So we can check if those uh, function correctly. Um, then we can analyze data on the fly. For instance, order velocities, um, delivery velocities, and um, control SLAs of correlated events. For instance, to find out uh, when the parcel has been sent after an order has been placed. Um, now I would like to present you the architecture um, which we designed for, for this use case. So um, as Javier already introduced, then we have um, our Nakadi event pass for, over which the operational systems communicate. We have our um, own Kafka and then we have a component called Kafka to Kafka which extracts data from the central event bus and um, imports it into our Kafka. Then. Uh, of course, we have uh, Flink, so we read from Kafka and to materialize um, the, inf the results into Elasticsearch. For Elasticsearch, um, for those results, we also have a user interface, uh, which is built uh, using Python and uh, Google Charts uh, API, uh, which is um, accessible over the public internet over OAuth. We also have a monitor uh, alert uh, service. So, for instance, if some um, a certain specified thresholds uh, has been exceeded, then we can issue some some emails and to see what happened with that order, why the package has not been set in a specified number of uh, of days. And we have also a configuration service. Um, so each um, each microservice can can uh, write to multiple um, multiple uh, Kafka topics, and um, we have some correlations. So the correlations read from multiple Kafka topics, and this allows us to to have a um, hard coded free uh, free variant of our jobs. Yes. So what features uh, do we use for for Flink? Uh, first of all, so I, as I mentioned, we have thousands of event times and uh, one event per Kafka topic. Then um, we analyze processes with correlated event types. For that, we use uh, um, joins and unions. Uh, we enrich data based on business rules. And we use sliding windows uh, from one minute to 48 hour for, for our platform snapshots. Then we use uh, the state to uh, store and access uh, um, alert metadata. And uh, in the future, we want uh, to use also the complex event processing. So we want to generate uh, complex events. Uh, I'll talk more at the end of this talk about it. So coming now to the second use case, the streaming ETL. Um, the classic uh, extract transform. Uh, Load process looks like this. Um, first, we have batch processing. Then we have, uh, of course, no real time. Uh, we use we employed different ETL tools like Pentaho and so on and so forth. And um, there's heavy processing on the on the storage side. Um, this new microservices world um, where we have. Um, Different, different sources and the amount of sources keeping, keeps increasing. Then we have a monolithic um, Oracle database management system, Oracle Data Warehouse. So um, it's, uh, it's now it's struggling with increasingly high loads. So of course we want to sort of solve that. So with radical agility, now we have um, data in a semi-structured format. We have uh, data distributed in separate Kafka topics. 
and uh, the uh, peak times where the data flow increased by um, several factors. I would like to mention now uh, Zalando Lounge, where there are certain campaigns for, for you get some, some discounts on uh, some, some products, and the customers uh, have um, a time interval where they can uh, start uh, buying that product, and that product also has, has uh, some, some limited quantities. So they all start at the beginning uh, uh, of the day, for instance, and so the throughput also increases. And uh, yes, like I said the data sources, the number of data sources increased by a number of several factors. And now I'd like to present you the architecture for, for, for this use case. So uh, the first part, you're already accustomed to it. Then, um, of course, we have Flink. So uh, we read from one Kafka topic right to another. And to do, there are some, some transformations, so, so aggregations. And um, we have our exporter, which um, exports files to Amazon S3, from which we um, uh, then import into the Oracle Data Warehouse. What we are currently having in production is the following. So we uh, um, transform complex um, payloads into simple ones uh, for easier consumption to the Oracle Data Warehouse. In the future, um, we want to combine several topics based on business uh, rules. Um, so use union and join, uh, pre-aggregate data to improve the performance. So as I said, the Oracle uh, Data Warehouse is a monolithic database, and it's struggling with uh, increasing high loads, so it cannot scale. So if we do uh, parts of the ETL in, the, in uh, Flink, then we can relinquish some of, its, uh, of the resources. And, uh, of course, data cleansing and um, data validation are also future topics for us. So now I would like to go to the future use cases. So I would like to um, continue the um, um, example with the business process. Um, so we have multiple uh, parcel shipped events per, uh, per order. That uh, means that you place an order. So hopefully you place an order with Zalando. And uh, you bought multiple items. And we cannot guarantee that uh, all the items will be shipped in one package. So this is why we have uh, several parcel shipped uh, events. And uh, in the real world, we don't have this uh, all parcels shipped uh, event only there. So we need to, to generate it. Uh, depending on, on, on the amount of parcel shift events we have uh, previously uh, um, received. Uh, another use case uh, which is currently gaining traction um, are deployments for BI teams. So uh, multiple, we have multiple BI teams. So our BI department is uh, like 80, 80 people strong. and. Uh, all these teams would like also to, to uh, take advantage of the stream processing and uh, use, use its features. So we have Flink jobs for uh, multiple BI teams, and uh, we have new requirements for this use case. So first of all, we want to manage and control the deployments. Um, then we want to isolate the data flows so that uh, uh, data is not falsified. So we have to prevent that uh, different jobs running in the same cluster right, right to, the, to, the, to the same sync. Um, then, of course, we have resource management. Um, so we have to want to share cluster resources about, amongst uh, concurrently running jobs. And um, last but not least, I would like to mention Streaming SQL here uh, because it's a very important uh, development which are which are we are very closely monitoring um, our bi department so the people which our colleagues are proficient in sql but uh, most of them don't have uh, there so most of them are analysts and don't have um, um, computer science background so we don't won't expect them to uh, to write uh, java or scala jobs in flink and um, having a declarative uh, language would enable us to uh, significantly lower the entry barrier for them. Yes. Then uh, we have uh, our Kafka to Kafka component. And, uh, currently, it's a Python app uh, which extracts events from our central event bus and writes them to our own Kafka cluster. We want to now uh, we want to create a more generalized um, Nakadi consumer and producer. 
so that we uh, so that several other teams can uh, can deploy their finger plans and uh, use it without uh, deploying the whole uh, psyche platform and for this we have our uh, first poc which is done and now for other future topics um, then there are always new use cases for real-time uh, analytics in the BI department. Uh, for instance, uh, sales monitoring to see exactly what we are currently selling at uh, the current time. Uh, then there's price monitoring. And um, as Javier mentioned, because of radical agility, each team can choose its own technology. So there are some developments from other teams. Um, for instance, Zando Payments, uh, they're looking into fraud detection for, for, their, for their architecture, and uh, now they're in the evaluation phase. Another team is the customer um, um, contact, and they're looking f uh, to contact customers uh, according to a variable event pattern. So, and they're also in the evaluation phase. And for this, they're also looking into the, more into the CP. So, and I'd like to conclude this talk uh, with the following words. So, Flink proved to be for us the right fit for our stream processing use cases, and uh, it enables us to build Zando's uh, next generation uh, uh, BI platform. If I will invite you to um, visit our tech blog um, for uh, if you're interested in our Psyche data integration and distribution platform. Thank you. And are there any questions? So on one of the slides, uh, there was Elasticsearch, and actually alerts were using Elasticsearch. Uh, wouldn't it be also a good use case for Flink, actually, to trigger alerts you based the, on the stream of data? You mean the queryable state? Yes, exactly. Because Flink also can store quite some data, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly here, yeah. alert. Yes. So do you want to take a question? Sure. Yeah. So um, the idea we had with uh, this architecture is that we can scale very fast, and uh, we have our own data model, which enables us to um, rapidly deploy um, new new correlations and new metrics, and so on and so forth. And um, Elasticsearch um, so far has hit uh, has fit the bill. And also, uh, I would like to point out that we also have this um, alert service which is also RESTful and uh, it's based on, on uh, RESTful calls to, to it. Yeah, and so actually our process is basically, uh, well, we have uh, thousands of windows open at any point of time. And once uh, we close the window, we evaluate the window, and then we check, okay, uh, there was a threshold violated, then if that happened, we write to Elasticsearch, but anyway, we can do something more for that, find an alert or something like that. Now our approach is just writing to Elasticsearch because as well we need to present that data in a graphic interface. So. Yeah, hi. Um, one question regarding this Nakati event bus. Um, so you have this REST API wrapper around Kafka. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the main reasons for that and not using Kafka directly or interacting with Kafka directly? Because um, each one of the, of the teams work in isolated Amazon accounts, AWS accounts. And we communicate via the public internet. So if we want to open a Kafka to the world, then all our data will be there. So anyone with a decent internet connection can download the whole company's data, right? So we need to, to, to wrap it up using RESTful APIs and with, that can guarantee us that only uh, per people with the, um, with the security or with the, um, that belong to the company can access the data, yes? And, um, yeah. and uh, we cannot open the IPs to the world, basically. That's it. It's more security. Okay. And so management and the things behind that. Okay. Uh, as, as far as I know, Kafka has authorization, authentication in it too. 
And I mean, there are, you can have firewall rules and stuff like that. Those weren't options um, in this case. I'm just yes. curious. <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't know, honestly, because I don't belong to the team who did uh, the deployment for that. Okay. But for sure, it has to be something regarding microservices, architecture, and security. And the, the main, um, the main um, idea of the company is that everything should be behind a microservice. So that's what Thank you. Thank you. I got a question regarding the data warehouse loading architecture you're using. Um, the data warehouse it itself, um, is it a classical star or a, a snowflake schema or is it already a data vault? Because if it were a data vault, would it be uh, possible to, to use Flink to directly stream into the, the, the data warehouse or is there any special reason why you use the indirection VRS3 and the yes. exporting? The reason is because uh, the data warehouse is in our data center, and the data is in Amazon. Okay. So we don't have a well, we don't have a private network between the two of them. Okay. So we need, and everything has to happen via RESTful API. So we need to download data. Okay. So, so you you get the the assumption you have to do everything via REST APIs and don't. And yes. aren't allowed to, to we are not use allowed to create tunnels or JDBC connections directly. Okay. Data sources. I understand. Any last question? Yeah, I saw the Docker containers and I wanted to understand like the interaction between uh, different Docker containers or like the individual container. Uh, you mean you mean our Flink appliance? So. Oh, wait a second. Can you go back in this? Yeah, 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 yeah. So these are like, uh, you don't like uh, have uh, interaction between one worker and the other uh, worker Docker containers? Uh, they all communicate via the um, load okay. balancer. Because when we were deploying uh, uh, Spark, uh, we had to like write special uh, functionality so that the, the worker nodes in one Docker container Okay. Yeah, so actually this appliance is also based our, on our Spark appliance okay. because we also use Spark for instance for the for the data lake. Okay. And um, yeah, it's, it communicates over the... Um, yeah, every worker is connected as well to the master and the master manages everything. So. Yeah. And we connect directly only to the master. So we deploy all the jobs in the master. Mm -hmm. The master has the task manager. Thanks. Um, what is your concept for versioning the, the payload? So when you get many teams pushing some unstructured JSON data, even uh, historically that could be evolving. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is your concept for knowing what, uh, what is in the data? Yeah, that's a problem that we are actually having. Actually, we had it two weeks ago with some data that changed. In, and they, not, they never told us that the data changed. Yeah. So yeah, the team responsible for, for Dave and Boss is working on that as well. So they will, uh, as I understood, they will have something before Kafka in the REST API to validate that the payload has the format that everyone has agreed on. And if there will be a change in the payload format, then they need to do some process before it. But that actually is not part of our of our concerns, because we suppose that they will deliver the data in the right for in the in the format that we're expecting, and if they will change it, they will inform us uh, before they will send the data. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.